Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 15. My name is Keith. This is the Immaculate Doug. Doug, how does one five find you? Uh, good. Yeah. Doing good. Are you awake? I know we're doing this in the morning. So we're yeah, both a little well, like a little early. I'm a little slow on response, but uh, we've got a great show. Lots of articles today. Some that I'm kind of interested about. Yep. Uh, we're getting into the season of new product releases, whether it's cell phones, tablets, computers. So lots of articles related to that. And our main topic is to give it away. Is it's a banger. Be funny <laughs> and hilarious and exciting. So, it, so I, I, I think we'll wake up as we yeah. move through this because this is, it, it, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited because uh, the main topic is something that we've not done before and it'll be interesting. So uh, something we've never really done before. But before we get to that fun, we're going to queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. All right. Yeah. So the first article we're going to talk about is Apple Watch. You know, those Apple Watches, they've got the regular series. I think they're up to the nine. They've also got these things called Ultra 2s. Now, these things are powerhouses. They have to have their own SIM card, their own service. But uh, I know people use them for skydiving and scuba diving and all kinds of stuff. Well, recently, the FDA has approved the Ultra Watch 2 as a first digital health tech device. Um, so the reason that it uh, received it is it uh, takes some pretty good uh, readings of your heart, uh, atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. I believe Aether. that uh, can detect if you have a uh, kind of a scary or a not normal heartbeat. I know there's a more technical way to say that, but yeah, these these watches are great. They're expensive. Um, I have a normal one. We have a friend that has an ultra. Oh yeah, and, that thing's uh, awesome. Uh, I look at it every time he comes <clears throat> over, or I go over to the house. Yeah, and they're hardened. That's the big thing about them. So, like uh, on the Apple press events, they show that you can like extreme sports. If you're like a mountain climber, if you're you know yeah. extreme weather, sand, water. I mean, this thing is it's hardened. Like it's really, 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 really tough. And that's like their claim to what makes the ultra different than their standard line is that these things are very, very tough. But Apple's been slowly increasing and leaning into the health thing where uh, I know the one that I have can uh, do oxygen levels, blood oxygen levels now, which was big, obviously, during the COVID time. Yeah, so they've crazy. been increasing that. And, you know, EKGs, uh, or at least a version of it, some some models can do, but now these can uh, detect AFib. So this is cool, them leaning into it. Now there's rumors that a lot of this lean into the healthcare space is that they may be developing a ring, uh, which there've been rings before by other brands that are non Apple. So that's not a new thing. I even think didn't Samsung have one. If I remember, yeah, right? I believe they did. I never got to experience it. I didn't see a lot of, uh, news about it. So, yeah. So rings are a thing. So wearables are still, still big in hospitals. And I know there's a lot of, uh, it's interesting. I read an article where some hospitals have talked about, if these are good enough, um, based off of their clinical trialing, just buying a batch of them. And then when um, people come into hospitals and they put one of these watches on them to kind of help supplement some of the equipment that may be needed for monitoring. So interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. All right. Oh, this one. I got to let you do this one, too. Yeah. So <laughs> next article, I caught my attention and I'll kind of say what I think and you let me know. But sure. Microsoft has recently issued a ban on police departments using facial uh, recognition and AI tools. Uh, kind of reading down the article, they're just trying to protect their user, obviously. So here's my thought to sum it up is. Uh, your expectation of privacy is kind of no and void to be protected. You know, we have the, the big brother thing, uh, you know, <clears throat> 1984, the movie, stuff like that. I know yeah. that uh, CIA, somebody's probably watching my phone, looking at my face, <laughs> whatever. But I know that I'm being protected. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. So there's a parallel article to this that I didn't add just because I thought it would be redundant, but you're going to see this more and more. So you had added this to the list and in parallel when i was searching for articles i found one that for airports they were going to use it uh, facial recognition and they're i think it was um 
the Federal uh, Aviation Commit, uh, Commission came out and said, you know, we don't want to allow uh, AI, facial recognition AI um, in certain airports <clears throat> for certain things. So the, the big thing is this. It's there's two there's two technologies at play. There's facial recognition, which, you know, we have on phones, but then there's facial recognition. And that's just like using your thumbprint. Yeah. Your face is specific to you. Um, and it's, it's, it's something, it's a biometric that you can use part of your validating your identity. That's one thing that we've been doing for a while now. Then there's combining it with AI and that's what this is. And if you read into the article, it talks about AI still has a tendency to hallucinate. Uh, and then that's a funny term, but what it means is it'll make up answers. Um, there's pitfalls. It yeah. says like hallucinations. Uh, even the best generative AI, AI models today invents facts and has racial bias um, introduced into the training data. So it's not that, you know, the AI is bad. It's just the way that it's trained on whatever data sets that they're using. And it says, which is especially concerning, given that people of color are far more likely to be stopped by police than their white peers. So it goes on. And, and a good example is yeah, earlier in the podcast, what, there was a whole thing where people were trying uh, to create, draw a Nazi soldier. Um, and, you know, it tried to, and it was drawing them as Asian <laughs> and other, which was, we know that's not historically accurate, but to the AI's credit, it's trying to be, uh, balanced, yeah. right? Because it's trained that way, that kind of bias and hallucination, that sort of thing, uh, it, when they're combining AI, cause the idea behind why would you combine AI with facial recognition would be to identify potential suspects. China's actually been doing this for a while. Uh, you walk across the street. Not only is your face picked up, but it goes to an AI and they basically immediately look to see if you have any warrants out for you. So the concern is, what if the AI is wrong and it says you're a murderer and you're not? You just happen to look like somebody because of these hallucinations with the data set that it's trained on. I think the same thing is for port of entry and, and U.S. customs and using it for that is that you don't want to flag things incorrectly because that's something you don't want to get wrong. So the problem is meshing face identification biometrics with artificial intelligence. That's the rub until it gets better. So my thoughts are, I think it's wise to wait on okay. in integrating this tool at this time, just before those same reasons, because the, the biases will be there because the data sets that they're trained on. That's my take. Yeah, I like that. I think uh, if we get it fully operational and there's no errors, which may never happen, I don't know, it would be good. And I think the human factor always has to come in. So, hey, this flags a uh, guy might have a warrant, like you said. Yeah. Well, we still need to have a human person verify that. I think a, a, a big part of it is too, not using uh, generative models that have been trained on the standard bits of data. Meaning, yeah. there's a big push now for what are called sovereign AIs, meaning that a company or an entity could train it on its own data set. So, if law enforcement could train an AI specifically for this purpose, which would take a long time, but maybe on their database that they have, it probably would be more accurate. Yeah. Right. So now there's still the issue of hallucinations and making it fact sometimes because it wants to give you an answer that would have to be dealt with. But I think the idea is, is really dedicated AIs for being purpose, purposeful for whatever it's meant to do. Um, and that, that's honestly the key to a lot of businesses adopting AI, in my opinion, is if they can scale AI up to train it on data sets that apply to them, they're going to have better results. And, it, you know, you don't have to be as worried about it. And honestly, that's part of the reason why self-driving <clears throat> has gotten better on cars. Now, there's still issues. Don't get me wrong. But when Tesla had released self-driving, I mean, all of that data from all those cars driving uh, trained their model and it, it infinitely got better than what they were doing in the lab. So that's a great example of that. It was purposeful. So that's my take. Yeah. No, I like that. I appreciate that. All right. That's a good one. Ah, this next one. I sent this to you. I'm so excited. Although as if I have another game, I need to get sucked back into. Right. So we talked a lot about Starfield um, made by Bethesda. And it was it was big. You know, some people had a lot of opinions on it. A lot of people didn't like it because, you know, Bethesda is known for making things like Fallout, which we've talked about. They also made Skyrim, you know, really, really big games. A lot of people irritated that it wasn't more like those games. But there was a lot of things inside of it that are quality of life stuff that people complain about. 
Uh, and this was released some time ago, but there's a big update coming. I believe it's May 15th. Uh, and yeah. they're adding some cool stuff. They did like a five minute teaser on this. So it's going to definitely make me want to go back to the game. Uh, so the stuff that they're adding into this update, which I'm really glad they're doing, it's a free update. Uh, they are, the map system was terrible. And so they yeah. put, 3d mapping in it with icons so that you can look around it's a massive world so it's hard to find your way around it they're going to fix that uh so that's that's one aspect uh they're going to up the frames people were mad this didn't bother me as much but up the frames to 60 frames per second if you want performance over quality uh on the xbox series x and of course pc as well and as we scroll down this was another oddity to me so you can get an apartment in the game and you can completely customize it however you want we're talking furniture chairs decorations but when you would buy a spaceship, which is where you spend most of your time, you couldn't do that. Well, they're going to let you do that now. And you can even buy a spaceship completely empty. You can populate it. Uh, and coming down the way, it won't be this update. They're adding vehicles to drive on the planets, which was my biggest complaint is that I had to run everywhere. Yes. So, yeah. Definitely. I, are you going to play this again? Like, what are your thoughts? So. You you spent more time in this than I did. Um, and I, yeah. I, well, I got a question for you. But, yeah. And then I'll let yeah, you go. Yeah. But, don't spoil because I still haven't beat the game. You've beaten okay. it, right? Yes. Okay. There's some game mode afterward called plus mode. They're adding a feature where you can reset all your stats and change your way you look. Could you not do that before? Like, what are your thoughts on all of this? But I want specifically want you to talk about the end of the game. Cause I've not, I've not so beat it yet. I think I can say that right now uh, you lose all your, items but you don't lose your character build up in your skill Uh, that's not giving anything away okay but yeah new plus mode is great i think because that just uh multiplies the playability over and over and over Mm -hmm. and if you haven't beat it i really don't want to give it away but there's a total like craziness to every time you start the game there's a certain percentage of what's going to happen once you beat the game is it based off your decisions? Yes, big time. Okay, okay. Because yeah. you make a lot of decisions well, in the game. When you restart, I'd really like to tell you, but I don't want to rest. <laughs> <laughs> He's dancing that line. Well, they're adding new features for when you beat it. So yeah. Something about you can now reallocate your points and you can change the way your character looks as well, I guess. Yeah, so if you had a stealth build, you can go to a, a tanker build, stuff like okay. that. Okay. As far as this update, I think it's great. Like I said, I've put a lot of hours on this game. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think I like Fallout and Skyrim a little better because they're just so well done. Yeah. But this uh, update here reminds me of Cyberpunk. You know, Cyberpunk 2077 yeah, great came game. out. Yeah. Uh, had a couple issues, but uh, the developers came back and they just started boom, 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 updates, updates. And it's a great game now, too. Now, I haven't played it in a while. There's so many other things, but yeah. hopefully Bethesda and they're a huge company are going to go back and take care of this. But you got to wonder with the uh, fallout being so hot right now, they're probably going to start dragging some of their staff off of this to work on the new uh, IP. Well, and the other thing product. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. The other part of this, they said, just like they did with Skyrim. And I don't remember if they did it with Fallout. I don't think they did, but they're going to open up the creator's pack for mods. Yeah. Which And that's where it really gets good, I think. Because then you have people creating mods for it, missions and everything. Yeah. And I think that's where this will accelerate. I did read, it's funny you should say, should say that because I read that they're saying that uh, Fallout 5 may come out sooner than we thought. Yeah. Um, and there's all this rumors about, you know, more fallout i think you're right they're going to chase the money probably (laughs) you know one thing i'm sad about and i'm kind of going off uh, to the side here is that the team of modders was working on a fallout for london i believe and the new update uh, crushed it so i really hope um that they kind of update it for that new uh update that bethesda just released yeah it looks amazing and thank you for showing it there well, and they uh, were, so, uh, yeah, explain this. This is not made by Bethesda, but it looks amazing. It, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of hours put into this, and uh, I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, and now, Bethesda, Bethesda has were released... they supporting this? Were they supportive of this? Like, they were... Uh, I don't know. That's what I was going to say, is Bethesda has released a statement that they will never, well, 
I don't know if they said never, but the, all their games will be in the continental United States. They did say that. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a cool premise. Um, oh, yeah. Well, but, I mean, there was a yeah. trebuchet on there. That was awesome. I, I know. There's so many cool things. In, in the game world, you want to know what's going on in it. But it is odd because what they got to be careful of is I do see as a studio, you have a story, especially with a TV show, that you now need to control the narrative. You necessarily can't have somebody going off and creating new. You're getting new... away from the canon of it. And like yeah. we've said before, canon is uh, the story. Make sure it aligns and everything. But on the flip side, you see that there's a love for this game, and that's why they're doing it. Um, but like Doug was saying, the the new release of Fallout 4, which has totally new graphics and add-ons, it broke this. And this is in development. Well, apparently it messed up their, their stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen with this now. And so... And that's what you got to worry about Starfield, but no one has really created a huge thing for that. I know True. Shattered Skies, I think that's the name of it. Uh, DLC is getting ready to drop. So, yep. Well, a lot of people will be going back to see what that's all about. There's also a difference between building something like this versus doing it within the creation tool community, uh, because that happened with Fallout. Fallout had tons of contributors that made really good content but it was in the confines of what bethesda set up within the tooling and in their marketplace in bethesda's marketplace mm -hmm. so it was some vetting going on this is different this is a completely we're building our own game uh based off of it and and i applaud them for it i think it'd yeah, be awesome it looks great yeah yeah but with it catching popularity i think it's going to be very very tough for them to um yeah. Because they've Continue done all new weapons, all new enemies. I oh. mean, so much stuff. Looks like a new game. Completely. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens with that. But. Yeah. And right. i got to correct myself. It's Shattered yeah. Space, not Shattered, shattered Space. Skies. So exactly. Go yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back, definitely play Fall or Starfield. It's, it looks yeah. awesome. I like it. All right. Now, my daughter messaged me about this, and it's too good to be true. Uh, good luck finding one. Of all places, Home Depot. As a May 4th decoration on sale. Now, let me be clear. This is a Darth Vader animatronic. It's a robot. It moves. It's decoration. It's seven feet tall. It comes with Christmas decorations and Halloween. So he's like holding a pumpkin there, or he can also have like tinsel and stuff. Like here's a candy cane lightsaber uh, that they, they, they gave him. And uh, there's the pumpkin that it comes with. Nice. And... The real kicker with this is it is only two ninety nine. That's not bad. Because if you go and look these up, like decorations, for like if you wanted a Darth Vader statue, you're looking at like seven hundred, eight hundred thousand bucks. Oh yeah, yeah. So it says here, uh, if you can't get your hands on one May Fourth, fear not, he will be online and in stores later this year. So if you're wanting that decoration, you want it to be our Darth Vader. This is this is the one for you. So I like their it. website actually froze on me. I wonder if like everybody's hitting it. <laughs> I can't uh, scroll. Yeah, I'm on the website now, but I'm not seeing him. Yeah, you see, he's not. Let me go all news. There we go. There we go. Now it's scrolling. I clicked on one of the photos and uh, it did not. It won't open up the photos. It locks the site. So who knows what's going on? Either way, this is really cool. I thought this was neat. I'm not going to get one, obviously. But uh, our friend Joe probably needs this. In the he does. I bet he can convince his wife. I mean, it's got Christmas and Halloween. Uh, it'll just show up, and she'll say, "Where'd that come from?" I know. That's what my daughter says. She's like, "I need one of these." Now she could probably, she, I could see her getting one of these <laughs> for sure. Nice. <laughs> All right. You take the next one, man. Yeah. Let me get caught up here. I was on uh, Home Depot looking for. That. He was busy. He's shopping. Yeah. Hey, so the <laughs> next one, uh, Nintendo is taking down a bunch of emulators. You know, we've heard about this in the past. Uh, one of the big things I used to go to, uh, Rom Paradise or That's some true, website like that. You're not supposed oh, to I... promote those. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, you I'm not promoting them. Sorry. You mean <laughs> you own all of this those games and these are backups. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so the backups that I got from this one website was shut down. There you go. So Better. Nintendo Better. is shutting down <laughs> another site, 8,500 UZ copies. So I'm not familiar with the UZ, if I'm saying that right. Y U Z U. Yeah. But Yuzu. Uh, 8,500 different. Uh, 
yeah. pirated or emulated copies of their games and they've crushed them down. So. so I want everybody to know, you heard it here first, if the Wired Nerdy podcast gets taken down due to NDA or violation of uh, trademarking because Nintendo goes after us, it's Doug's fault. My bad. Uh, <laughs> just backups, I swear. Backups. <laughs> just, yeah, you own all of them. Uh, so what this is, game emulation, you can, like Doug said, you can play games in a variety of different ways with emulation uh, and things that are called ROMs, uh, where this one's a little touchy. It's not like we're Nintendo is very aggressive. They've always been very aggressive, even about their old stuff like Super Nintendo, Nintendo. We're talking 20, 30, 40 year old stuff in some cases. Not quite 40, but close. Um, but they're very aggressive about the Yuzu emulator because it plays Switch games. Switch is current right now. And so they are going after because they don't want you to pirate Switch games. They want you to go buy a Switch and buy Switch games from them. So I kind of get it. This would be like a, um, a PlayStation 5 emulator. Think of it that way. If your current system has an emulator, you don't need to go buy a actual system. You can just emulate it. So Nintendo is notoriously, uh, you know, brutal legally about this. And I think part of this is if you remember last week, we had talked about on the uh, Apple app, app store, you can now do emulators. And actually, Doug sent me something pretty cool earlier this week. I didn't even know about that. We'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but I think because now it's people can play these emulators on their phone, I think they're really cracking down on them. So I will say I've tried the Yuzu emulator. I have it on my uh, my Steam Deck because my Steam Deck I use for mainly emulating all of my backed up ROMs. Uh, and so and it works great, uh, but uh, I, I see why they're going after it. Um, but now that people can play on their like iPhones because that got opened up, I think they're like worried about it becoming more and more popular. So yeah. now you sent me something speaking of emulators. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was that? I'll let you speak to that. It was pretty cool. I didn't know it could do this. Uh, the iPhone emulator? Is that what it was? The one with, yeah, it was the, you oh, said yeah. it's making you so, want to get uh, an iPhone now. And I didn't know about the one controls that you could do. So, yeah, there is a specific uh, emulation program or app on the iPhone or iOS world that lets you do tilt controls, move controls, but it also lets you hook to your TV using uh, AirPlay. And it uh, lets you connect uh, wireless controllers. So that alone for me is enough to maybe uh, make the switch to iOS. It looks really good. Yeah. And this what was cool about this, and we talked about this, but the part that I, I didn't know and that he had shared was when he sent this video to me, I knew that you can obviously with any Apple product, you can stream your screen to your TV if you have uh, Apple TV. The part that I didn't know is that if you remember certain Nintendo things like the Wii um, are motion controlled. And what he showed me was, and this is our, our guy ETA Prime. He has great videos, by the way, if you all, <laughs> he does great videos, but th this is it in the action. But what was neat is when you shake your phone, if you had it on your TV or, or tilt control like a Wii, it, because it has gyroscopic in it, the game will respond. I didn't know that. So you could use your phone motion controls just like you did back in the Wii. So in theory, if you had... Uh, Wii Bowling, and you put it on your TV because you have Apple TV, and you're using your phone to control it. If you swing it, you could do like your bowling. That's so cool. It so, is really cool. That was the part that Doug had sent me. I was like, whoa, like Wario, Wario, where? That's a great game, but you sometimes have to like shake your your screen and and things like that. Now you could do that if you if you were emulating your quote ROM backups. Yeah, I definitely think it's a good idea. To the article we were just talking about, I agree with Nintendo about protecting their current stuff. Now, I really don't agree with their Super Nintendo and stuff that's years and years and years old. But I I mean, they still need to protect their intellectual property, but they could be a little less stringent on it. So That's true. But and yeah, it, definitely yeah. protecting the stuff that you are currently marketing now, you're currently developing. I yeah. totally agree with that. Yeah. And to be fair to them, Nintendo, if you pay a subscription, you can gain access to a back catalog of Genesis games even. A not just, games, yeah. not even Super Nintendo, but even Genesis. But it's limited. So there may be games you want to play that you remember from your childhood that just aren't available on a paid service, yeah. right? So, I don't know. I, I see it. And there's also a whole thing about game preservation, too. Um, 
because oftentimes, you know, granted there's collectors and uh, cartridges and that sort of thing, but sometimes in time, there were only so many of those were manufactured and they could fail over time. And so I don't know, there's a whole debate on, on this whole thing about emulation. So, you know, we'll see what happens this fall, but I've been studying the iPhone 16 and the Pro Max is supposed to be uh, a little bit bigger than the 15 Pro Max. Yeah, or well, actually, plus this emulator, plus this uh, Ultra Watch Two, which I doubt I get. But yeah, well, on that point, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch us up and go to the the article I had last because it's in the same vein. Okay, yeah. I'll let you let you read that highlight there and let you take that one there. Yeah, so just like I said, new uh, iPhones are coming. Apple is launching some new iPads May seventh. So. It is being called the Let Loose event. You know, they've got to put a good spin on it. They've always got really colorful, um, excuse me, sorry, commercials. They've got really colorful icons. We're looking at uh, what appears to be the Apple logo. Very colorful, multiple, colorful, multiple colors. And a hand holding what I believe is an Apple pencil. Mm-hmm. Uh, really right. good. You know, I uh, still go back to Steve Jobs saying he never wanted a stylus <laughs> way back <laughs> when, but I get it. Uh, he also said that about artwork. mouse control, and you can do yeah. it, you can use a mouse on them now. Oh, <laughs> so. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Well, works how much great. is that Apple mouse? That's a different show. Well, no. Well, I can answer that very quickly. You can you can sync any Bluetooth mouse to it. Oh, okay. okay. But they do have an Apple mouse now. If you have a a Magic Keyboard like I have here, it's integrated into the the casing. Let me bring up my screen so you can actually see. So here's see. the problem: me going. To so iOS. this is a Magic Keyboard yeah. uh, here. But if I open this bad boy up, I want all the stuff with it. <laughs> so let me let me open this up so you guys can see. So here's a keyboard. See that? It has a trackpad on it. And it's so, all magnetic and hooks. Yeah, it has this little magnet. Uh, this is the connectors. And then when I put this bad boy on there, I can use, and it's got a little cursor on the screen. I am nice. a crazy fan of this bad boy. Oh, I like that uh, skin. It's the skin? It, but... Yeah. I know. Actually, oh I kind of need to get a new one. This one's getting kind of old because it's starting to you know, wrinkle on the sides. But point is, we were just talking about the emulation stuff. Guess what? You can do it on here, too. So, And you have a big screen. So... I'm excited about this. Uh, I will not, I, as, just because they're expensive, because um, I'd only gotten this bad boy probably about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And I yeah. love this. It has an M.1 chip in it. Um, instead of getting another Mac laptop, I opted for this. And I will tell you what, it's an amazing device. I, am, yeah. I mean, it is so good. So I'm excited to see what they do with this. Um, what the, you know, but I, a lot of people are saying, you know, they're so fast already. They don't really need, cause they'll probably put an M.3 and, you know, in it, and it doesn't really necessarily need it. This yeah. M.1 I have is so fast. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can do mouse. You can use it pretty much as a full desktop almost. Oh, nice. Yeah. That, and that's what it looks like cradled on the screen there. So what I just showed you, that's what this is right there. It's in the magic. That keyboard. looks really nice. And you know, in my new job i see lots and lots and lots of people using tablets over laptops they mm -hmm. seem so easy to carry so easy so, to yeah. type on they're powerful now like yeah. especially the mac ones i would i haven't to be fair you have a I've what got do you a have samsung samsung that's uh, it tab 7 fe which is super powerful yeah Does, so it works really, really well good. you've done yeah. some emulation on it right yeah and it came with a stylus uh that's it cool it's really good yeah yeah this thing does too. I mean, honestly, unless you need a specific app that's not available on tablet, it's so hard to beat this, man. I love it. I personally, I absolutely love my my iPad. I use it all the time. Awesome. So yeah, for those wanting to catch that, it is May 7th, 10 a.m. Yep. Eastern, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, if my time zones are right. Yeah, you nailed it. Um, I've always liked Keynotes, whether it's Samsung, Google, all of them. Apple. Yeah. It's something about when a company releases their product, Talking about it, all the tech stuff, probably that I don't understand, but still watching all the tech uh, stuff, specs. Uh, it's entertaining. They're excited for it. The crowd's excited for it. It's really good time. Yeah. All right. This one I'm excited about, and I hope it sticks. Audible, which is owned by Amazon, and it's audiobooks. Um, they are testing a cheaper plan in Australia. Now, they're saying, now this is, you know, within the currency in Australia, the AUD, uh, 899 plan is likely, 
an answer to Spotify's recent audiobook push. This is where competition is good. And let me explain. Audible is awesome. I have also, see, I've got all my little gadgets here. Uh, I have my, my Kindle. You know, we've talked about this bad boy here. Um, and I love it. But in Aud- Audible is integrated into it. So when you buy a book, sometimes only for like $2 extra, you can add the Audible to it. And it's good because it's got like really good voice acting. You know? The problem I have with Audible, and I've done, they do like these three month trials or so many week trials. They're, I love it. But 14, actually, it's like $15 a month. Yeah. And if I'm not going to pay that for World of Warcraft, and I look at it the same way, the reason why I don't do high paying video games like that is because I will go months like this month where I will not play a game because I am booked. I am slammed yeah. with work, school, family. And then it's a waste of money. I might as well flush that $14 down the drain. It's the same with this. I may not listen to an audiobook, right? So I don't want to spend tons of money. And I really hope this takes off because I love Audible, but I've never pulled the trigger on it because it's too much money. Now, yeah, I you just looked it up. Uh, yeah, you told me non Australian is five dollars and ninety three cents. Dude, America, or that would US, be great. So. And it was only recent that Doug, you were talking about something that I have done, and that is how do you get free audiobooks? You've done this before. Yeah. Um, what is the name of that? Uh... They changed it. It used to be Libby. Okay. Um, now it's Overdrive. Let me look. I got it on my phone. Yeah, Go ahead. So, Explain uh, what it is. There, there. It used to be Libby, I guess, Overdrive. I haven't done it in a while. But if you get a... It was Libby. From... It, it's now Overdrive. So oh. it was Libby. Now it's called Overdrive. It's an app on your phone. Go on. Sorry, bud. Yeah. You no, know, you're good. You use your library card, which uh, most places library cards are free. They're uh, paid for by your state, county, government, whatever. And you get all the audiobooks. And I'm not talking just a couple. You get the big ones that just came out. You know, I listen to all the Harry Potters. I listen to all the Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's so amazing. Yep. And it's free. It's a free service paid for by your local uh, library organization. Yeah. Doug brought this up recently, and I had discovered it, especially when I was doing a lot of driving in my career. Uh, I used to have to commute a lot. And I was really into these. Both podcasts are free and nice, but this is nice. You just want a book to break it up. Libby was a. Uh, it, it's overdrive now owns all of them. So a library can choose which one they want to use. So overdrive uh, has their own app, but they own Libby Sora and canopy and a library within your area can pick which one of these that they're, mm-hmm. you, you know, you want to be able to, to use. I started with Libby and I think our local library then switched to the overdrive app. Um, dude, it, you're all right. It is, it's free and there's so many books. Let me go to browse collection. You can even check out, look at this. He's right. John Grisham. 2024 this just came out yeah big, look at that uh, big name books that just came out yeah now i will say this only reason why i will pick audible over this in some scenarios they don't have all the titles that maybe i want all the time that's number yeah. one yeah. number two these are time boxed so sometimes and there's two things there's time box and then they're limited so let's say the john grisham one they only allow at a library like so many checkouts, kind of like real life, so even digital. Yep. And you only get it for so much time and you have to renew your time. Now, that's not bad, but I there's a few of these. I had to get on a wait list within the app. And I the did. problem that I had, it would ping me and say, oh, Keith, this book's available. And I had waited a month. But guess what? My life was busy and I wasn't able to listen to it. <laughs> that's yeah. my only downside. That is. But, but it's free. Yeah. So. Well, and the thing about audiobooks is. Who is reading the book to you? Oh, yes. I mean, yes. I've read or I've listened to lots of books where they kind of have a celebrity guy yeah. reading it. Amazing. Yeah. Will Wheaton, and I know I've said oh, this he's before, great. read uh, several uh, audio books that I've listened to. He does an amazing job. I, You know, you're so right on that because some of these are just amazing. By the way, they just announced last week. We could have put it on the list. They're redoing the entire book series of Harry Potter with over oh, 100 gosh. actors. And it'll be the whole book series and it'll be all audiobook. That's going to be amazing. With new actors. So that's kind of cool. But I. Oh, absolutely. What was it? It was an odd one. and I didn't know if I'd like it, but I listened to the audiobook of Robin Williams's um, a biography. It wasn't an autobiography because he didn't write it. But what was cool, the guy, the narrator did it. He did an impersonation of Robin. And it was so good when he would read the lines of out of Robin's journal or whatever. He was doing the impersonation and he sounded just like him. So nice. I don't know, made it more immersive. So, but you got options. Very cool. Anyway, we went down the rabbit hole in that one, but that was fun. Ah, that's good. All right. So for our main topic, 
uh, I'm gonna let you set this bad boy up while I get everything queued up here. You know, it's no uh, mystery. You know, we've been talking about AI all last season, all this season. So it's start uh, time. It's time for us to start having a little fun with it. So today we came up with an idea of who would win. A you challenge. know that game of who would win a fight? Uh, this guy, this guy. So we are gonna battle Gemini. Google's Gemini versus uh, OpenAI's ChatGPT, and Keith has 4.0, the latest version, I believe. So we are going to put it to the test. Now, the first one I have on the list here is who would win in a fight between Darth Vader and Legolas? That's Darth Vader from the Star Wars series, for those uh, that haven't been awake since the uh, 70s and 80s, and then Legolas from Lord of the Rings series. The elf that oh, did uh, uses you, that bow. There you go. Yeah. Up. Oh, did I freeze? No, yep. No, we're good. It freeze froze just a moment, but it's okay. We'll keep oh, on rolling. Right. You're good now. now. Back. Technology. So yeah, uh, I put that prompt in there. Who would win in a fight between Darth Vader and Legolas with Gemini? So we got to break down. It breaks down his advantages. Or do you want me to just share the screen? Here? Yeah. Uh, go ahead and break down the advantages. I'm actually gonna. I'll bring up a. I'm gonna bring up an image. Okay. If I can here. So uh, Gemini says Legolas advantages are his uh, agility and speed and his marksmanship with that uh, bow. Darth Vader's advantages are, of course, the lightsaber. Uh, He's able to use the force. He has telekinesis. He can uh, use that force to throw objects at Legolas, disarm him or crush him. And he also, of course, has that uh, force choke. Now, the, it also gives you possible scenarios. This is why AI uh, is so fun sometimes. Possible scenarios is if it's a long-range fight, Legolas can keep his distance, launch a barrage of arrows. Or if it's a close-quarters fight, uh, Vader's lightsaber and strength is probably going to outdo Legolas. But we got some pictures on there for Keith. Uh, Just so you know who we're talking about. Uh that legless on the screen you know uh that long blonde hair he's uh elf uh got the big pointy ears and then of course darth vader so Uh, i got a question so gemini pointed out all these strengths and weaknesses and this is what we want to do we wanted to compare how do the ais rationalize and and will it pick a side now i found if some if the matching is pretty close it won't pick a side did gemini pick a side it did so what did it, it says, say? In most scenarios, Darth Vader with the Force at his disposal would overpower Legolas. However, Legolas can possibly land a lucky shot or keep Darth Vader at bay with those uh, uh, arrows and his uh, archery skills. He okay. might have a slim chance of winning, is what uh, Gemini said. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Here's what now. So mine also broke down into categories of combat skills, weapon abilities, durability tactics. But the summary for this is ChatGPT 4.0. Uh, it's supposed to be the newer trained model. This is what it says. Given Vader's overwhelming mastery of the force and his armored resilience, he would likely overpower Legolas in a direct confrontation. Legolas best chance would be to exploit the environment with stealth and long range attacks. But even then Vader's sensory enhancement and telekinesis powers would likely neutralize such an advantage. Thus my verdict, Vader would emerge victorious. (laughs) It's Flat out said it. <laughs> Didn't give much of a chance. <laughs> so here's my thought as a human being. I think Darth Vader wins hands down because I do too. The Force is so powerful, and uh, why could he not grab those arrows with the Force and send of them course back he to Lake? He could stop them yeah. all. So I say Darth Vader's winning every time. All right. So the next one, I'm gonna cue it up. Yeah. Is who would win in a fight between Neo from the Matrix and Batman? Yeah. Let me see here. We'll get the so images up for here. For those that don't know, Neo is from the series The Matrix. Uh, he is inside The Matrix, a computer program. That's where all of his powers exist. But we believe that his powers go outside of The Matrix as he is the one. And then, of course, Batman. Still, the best Batman is uh, Michael Keaton. Knocked I think it, there, I said it. I think it's hilarious, too. The Batman. Look at this terrible Batman, McFarlane. <laughs> Oh my gosh, with the pink hat and everything. Well, look at the one all the way to the left. <laughs> it's awesome. Girls love Batman. That's so cool. we're looking at a Lego Batman in a tutu with a fairy. Uh, butterfly wings. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, yes. Uh, so we got Batman and we have Neo. Um, I popped mine in here. Have you put yours in yet? Yes. I can... 
Yeah, go so, ahead. What what does Gemini say between these two? This will be interesting. Uh, Gemini starts off with Neo uh, inside the Matrix. It breaks it down inside it the Matrix and outside the Matrix. So uh, he has superhuman abilities, you know, incredible speed, reflex, uh, fly. He knows kung fu and all kinds of other programs he can load. But then it goes to Batman's advantages anywhere. Yeah. So what it's saying is Neo's only good inside the Matrix, and Batman is good everywhere. That, you know uh, what? That rationale is spot on on mine, too. It says yeah. in the in the battle, Neo would undab- undoubtedly dominate if inside the Matrix. Neo, outside the Matrix, Batman. <laughs> Sound logic. I can't argue with that. Now, this is really crazy because mine says key factors for the fight. Uh, Location. If Neo is Mm -hmm. in the Matrix, he's got it. But preparation. If Batman has time to understand the Matrix and Neo's abilities, he could potentially develop countermeasures. That's so crazy. You know, Batman does have an affinity for technology. Yeah. So... If he could hook into the Matrix and load his own Kung Fu and all his programs... Interesting point. Interesting yeah. point. See, this is this is handy. This is handy. There, you know, I'm not, I'm not arguing. All right. So Gemini closes it out as inside the Matrix, Neo wins. Outside the Matrix, Batman has a fighting chance, especially with prep time. I like that it adds that. I yours added that qualification, and mine did not. And I so I think Gemini definitely wins that round on rationale. That's yeah. that's what I think. All right, so the next one is who would win in a fight? Darth Maul from Star Wars. Remember, he's a demon-looking dude. He's a pretty cool guy, all right? Or my boy, Superman. Getting this queued up here so we have images to look at. All right, so we got Superman versus Darth Maul. I'll go first here. Uh, it's It breaks it down into powers and abilities, defense, offensive, combat strategy. It says, if you consider all these factors when you weigh them out, Superman's powers are on a scale that Darth Maul would find nearly impossible to counter effectively. Superman's invulnerability to most forms of physical harm and significantly superior strength would likely render Maul's lightsaber and force abilities ineffective. That's chat GPT. What are your thoughts, man? What What does Gemini weigh in on? So Gemini talks about advantages, disadvantages. Um, some of the advantages for super ne- Superman is that invulnerability, uh, superhuman strength, you know, heat vision. Obviously, Darth Maul has the force, uh, that force choke, telekinesis, kind of like uh, Darth Vader. So this is, uh, it says in bold down here, why Superman wins. So it says the vast difference in physical strength and speed make it one-sided fight for Superman. Superman could easily overpower uh, Maul. And it says, according to Gemini, lightsabers are ineffective against Superman. And that's what I always wondered. Can a lightsaber cut Superman? Because you know bullets bounce off of him? I would say not, because in canon, they say that he um, it's kryptonite. Now, yeah. if you had a kryptonite lightsaber, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think they're both in agreement on that one. So that's an interesting Now, one. it gives a possible fight breakdown, if you want that. Sure, go ahead. Uh, Darth Maul starts by igniting his uh, double-bladed lightsaber. Wait, it did a it does a fictional breakdown of what it yeah. play play by play. Yeah, S- Superman cool. speeds toward him, easily dodging Maul's swing. He then <laughs> overpowers so... Maul with his superior strength and disarms him. So with cool. Maul helpless, Superman could use his heat vision or simply restrain him for capture. That's really cool. Maul's done, Darth. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna throw the next one in because we All got right. our time clicking here. This one, next one is a fight between, I'm going to get them up, the Terminator. Ooh, I like this. Where is this going? And let me get my images up. As we all know, the T-100, I'm assuming, is the model. Or sorry, T-800. Oh, I was Because the T-1000 the was liquid. Man. Yeah, T-800. Uh, and then the Predator. Ooh. Ooh, nice. I'll put my prompt in on this, the gym. This might be in the comics, actually. But we'll see. All right, so I got my prompt in. Um, yeah, surely break- they've fought before. I, it, yeah, breaks it all down, and it says, given the attributes of analysis, the battle could swing either way depending on circumstances. In a straight-up firefight, the Terminator's relentless pursuit and durability could give it an edge. However, in a scenario that allows for stealth and tactical planning, the Predator's superior technology and combat tactics would likely prevail. 
Thus, my verdict. In a high-tech stealth and tactics battle, the Predator wins. In a direct combat scenario, the Terminator might just overpower the Predator. You know, my take on this, um, I think the Predator wins almost in both scenarios. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Now, Gemini doesn't give a clear answer. Ooh. It says uh, different Terminator models have varying abilities. Fair. It believes a T-1000 would pose a much greater challenge for a Predator than the T-800. I agree. Liquid metal. I, I hands down agree with it on that. I made the assumption, and I think I made the assumption on this one, too. It even yeah. it points out that this is an... Mine at the top says uh, this is an evaluation of the Terminator, specifically the T-800 model. And it breaks down what it is. So mine chose a model on its own. I didn't tell it. So that's interesting. Yeah. And it adds another thing that the Predator is loaded with a plasma caster. Mm -hmm. And the Terminator's biggest weakness is sustained plasma fire. So there you go. Ooh, I like it. Look at that. It's interesting how each one looks at it. Yeah. Depends on what data it's trained on, I guess. Huh. So it doesn't really pick on yours, right? Uh, no, it doesn't. It just kind of gives, uh, here's, uh, things to consider. It does not give a clear winner on mine. Okay. Well, the next one I can tell you picked, it's freaking weird. <laughs> I just picked the most random thing. Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. I got to put that in. Oh, nice fridge. <laughs> I know. Cause I typed in Sub-Zero. Some zero, and this is just nuts. So, Versus... for those that don't know, I'd, I'd like to give an explanation. Sub Zero is a character wears all blue from the series Mortal Kombat, video game, movies, uh, some shows. He's brutal. Uh, and then Pikachu <laughs> from Pokemon. <laughs> I wanted to pick polar opposites. You did. Uh, you want to uh, go first? Have you ran sure. it? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, at the very beginning, uh, it says, in a fight between Sub-Zero and Pikachu, Sub-Zero has a clear advantage for several reasons. So Pikachu's already lost. So Sub-Zero is able to uh, freeze uh, Pikachu, obviously. He's a master of martial arts, and he's a very highly trained warrior with uh, pain tolerance, better than uh, Pikachu. So yours picks Sub-Zero. Yeah. And it says, why Sub-Zero wins? Sub-Zero's cryomancy directly counters Pikachu's electric attacks. His durability and fighting skills give him an edge in close combat. And he can create icy terrain, limiting Pikachu's mobility. Mine is different than yours. Oh, so man. Okay. Mine says that the outcome does depend on several factors. If Sub-Zero can close the distance quickly and neutralize Pikachu's ability by freezing the terrain or Pikachu itself, it could secure the victory. However, Pikachu's speed and ranged electric attacks would be a serious problem for Sub-Zero, especially if Pikachu keeps its distance and uses the high voltage electric strike. And then it says it's closing. This is a tough call. I'd give a slight edge to Pikachu due to its ranged attack capability and agility which could keep it out of reach of Sub-Zero's deadly ice grabs. It did weigh in on it. It chose P- Pikachu. Chat GPT chose Pikachu. So Jim and I chose. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's good, though. That's what we wanted to see was the difference in an- analytics. OK, right. that surprises me. Well, of course, we have to close this out One more. with the uh, two of the baddest men on the planet, right? Or in the world. So who would win in a fight between John Wick and James Bond? John Wick being of the uh, Wick series, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, hired assassin, uh, going against the uh, church. No, I'm saying it wrong. The, going against the uh, sect of assassins. The high table. The high table. The high table. Thank you very yes, much. Trust me. I love these movies. And then, of course, James Bond, 007, uh, License to Kill, MI6, MI5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I see a, a theme on mine. This is interesting. Uh oh. I have an opinion on this one. I, I think hands down it would always be John Wick. That's my opinion. I think but, so too. But but we see the same theme that we saw with the Batman uh, analytics. And this is where you start to see patterns and how it looks at things, the 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 data model. So it says, um, John John Wick may have the upper hand due to his sheer combat efficiency and determination. However, if Bond can use his superior resources, gadget, and strategic mind to level that playing field or set traps, he could potentially outmaneuver Wick. The outcome would heavily depend on circumstances of their encounter. If it's a straightforward combat scenario, John Wick. 
would yeah. likely overpower Bond. If it's a scenario that allows for preparation and environmental use, Bond could tilt the odds in his favor, which is kind of like the Batman Neo thing, which is ironic because it's Keanu, Keanu Reeves again. <laughs> yeah. What is your you saying? Know, mine uh, basically sums up the same thing. It gives advantages for John Wick, you know, his gun fu, mm-hmm. uh, martial arts, uh, James Bond, his versatility, his tactics, and his gadgets from mm-hmm. Q Branch. Yep. So who wins? Uh, long distance, both are experts with firearms, but Wick's pure gunfighting skills gives him an edge. Mm-hmm. Close quarters, Wick's martial arts expertise uh, overpowers Bond. I agree. Uh, so preparation, if Bond has time to set traps or utilize yeah. gadgets, he could gain an advantage. You know, kind of same thing. They said the same and thing. And I like the breakdown. So if it's a surprise encounter, Wick's raw fighting style still gives him an upper hand. But a prepared encounter, Bond could use some of those gadgets to outsmart Wick. Fascinating. But I don't think so. Wick is on point all the time. He seems like he's ready to go. He does. He almost has like a sixth sense. He may be able to know if there's booby traps maybe or not. some of the matrix is bleeding over from neo <laughs> to john wick there. it very well may be so that does it dude that was fun that was fun. we should like do that more often but come up with more creative ones and here's our ask if you have others that you want to see you want showcase like oh, if you have absolutely. arguments with we'll- your friends you're like hey this person would win shoot us a message out on YouTube or on Spotify, uh, add a comment to one of the videos and we'll, we'll pick it up. And if we do this again, we'll collect it and we'll add it to the list Definitely. because man, it, it's, this is a good way to, you know what I like about this? Can you imagine we used to have these debates? Now you can have a third party way in that's doing oh, analytics. Absolutely. And if your friend is like, Hey, blah, 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 just pull up your, your app, type it in. Let's see what it says. And then you can argue out the points. Interesting. I like it. It was a really good time. Good party game. That's what I think. So, all right, guys, I think that does it for episode number 15. I've had a blast. This was a very unique and fun one. Um, Now, I will say this. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, We may, if we can, do some releases of some retro game reviews, which are shorter, uh, if we can get that done. But in the next, I would tend to say three weekends at least, we're going to be busy. We both have a lot going on uh, in this month of May. So just know that we may be on a brief hiatus but we're going to kick it back into gear uh, as june rolls around do not leave us we promise we'll, we'll, we'll be posting stuff it just won't be the long form podcast yeah. uh so we'll keep posting things uh weekly uh but it won't be the long form that's kind of the goal is is what we have going down the way there so doug did i forget anything round us out nope. close uh, us out i think you're good uh we want to just thank everybody for listening you know we recently had a shout out from como RetroCon. we want to thank them big time oh, yeah thank awesome. uh, summer awesome show. over there sumner sorry yeah uh three years running i hope uh fourth year comes uh pretty quick it was exciting we met a lot of celebrities as i would say uh, mr yeah. right way neo ness mm-hmm. and uh now you'll have to help me with the uh, bear mm-hmm. oh what um I have his I'm name. Throwing here. you on the spot. Yeah. You did. You didn't tell me you're gonna mention. <laughs> he just made a comment on our on our YouTube, actually. So yeah, we had three big uh, YouTubers coming to our booth at Como RetroCon. It was good uh, hanging out with them, talking. So we have plenty of content coming up. Hopefully, get some interviews with those guys and some other people. We have our merch store. Lots of good stuff in there. That uh, baseball tee I wore it at the con all day. Very nice. Uh, looks really good. We also have some coffee cups and hats and shirts and mouse pads, all kinds of stuff you want. I got him here. Retro Bear OG. Retro Bear OG, shout out. And he actually commented on one of our videos of how uh, good uh, our merch was and how good stuff was. So shout out to Brian and Old Timer Games for doing that. Yep. And can you see the screen there, Doug? Yeah, sure. Can. Right, so if that, you all uh, go out, give him a like. Uh, he's got some really good videos out there. Such a nice guy. Like all oh, of them. Nice they guy. were amazing. And oh, and he has a um, a retro Como oh, convention well, video, too. I have to watch that. I'm going to check that out. He, Yeah, he just made a comment on uh, our video. He is awesome. Just like Mr. Rightway, just like Neo Nest. These guys were the best. So yeah. check out his channel. Check him out. He is a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, and uh, I had a blast. I mean, Sumner did a great job with this convention yeah. this year. It just keeps getting better and better. And I hope it hope it continues. So anyway, everybody, you have a awesome, awesome week. And we will be talking to you very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. See ya.